Hi class, in this video I'm going to cover how we do toe compensation for tensile test when our strain gauge slips. So I'll show you, I've got our raw specimen uh, file from the Instron, the CSV file. and I'm going to copy over the extension load and tensile strain. Uh, so if I hold the control shift and down and copy this, I'm going to copy it into uh, the data reduction that we did from lab three. So ideally, if I just copy and paste this, uh, everything should update correctly. I should get a uh, elastic modulus yield strength, tensile strength, um, because we've already done all the calculations. Uh, one thing you should always check is that, uh, so the length of the data set here, since we didn't pull all the way, um, is shorter so it's actually a good idea just to delete all the other data that you don't need okay and uh, so what you see is that I'm getting this error uh, for my elastic modulus which or consequently gives me an error for the yield strength uh, and why is that so if I look at the uh, zoom in in the low strain region. I don't actually even see my data. If you scroll down to the overall data set, uh, what we see is something interesting here is that when we pulled the specimen, it appears that our strain went negative somehow and then started going up. So actually, we're zoomed in on this region of the graph here. And we're not going to actually see any stress strain data. So that's why uh, we're not getting the correct calculations. But if you go over and look at the elongation, the elongation continues to go up. So I'm at 1.7 here, millimeters that is, and it continues to get longer. That's because our crosshead is going up at a rate at five millimeters per minute, yet somehow our strain is negative. Uh, and we know that's not actually possible. So what is happening is if you didn't have your strain gauge properly aligned when you started the test, uh, it can actually kind of slip and then sort of self-align. And, and that's what we're seeing here is this little slip. So how do we correct that? So in order to correct the error from our strain gauge slipping, what we need to do is called a toe compensation. And so essentially what we see is that basically any data where the strain has gone negative, we can't really believe any of that data because uh, anything prior to this point right here, our strain gauge wasn't really properly aligned with our specimen, uh, which it means essentially we're going to have to throw all that data out and disregard it, which is a little unfortunate because that's when our uh, most representative part of our elastic modulus, but that's sometimes what happens with data. So in order to toe compensate, uh, what we do is we take the region uh, right after the data starts to go trending and increasing strain. So that's when the uh, strain gauge has actually been self-aligned as, as the specimen is being elongated. And then what we can do is a linear regression on that set of data. So what we should get is as an equation for uh, that initial portion right there. Uh, and what we can see is where that intersects the x-axis, that's actually how much uh, I'll call that our strain shift. That's how much we need to shift our data in order to get the correct data. Um, and so in order to solve for that, it's just a rearrangement and solving for when y equals to zero. That will give me, so my x value, you could consider your x intercept, which is E shift. And so what we can do is shift our data by that much. Uh, and what that would look like if we were to do that is if we were to add the strain values, we would get this toe compensated data. And what's nice about this is that the uh, regression sends us right back to zero stress and zero strain. Uh, because we know if we are not straining our sample, well, in theory, we shouldn't have any stress. So now we're correcting this. Uh, and the reason we have to do this is not to get the Young's modulus, we could get the Young's modulus from the data over here, but in order to do our 0.002 strain offset, 
we need to be going through the origin. So you have to do this toe compensation, unfortunately, if your strain gauge slipped, which is uh, why you should spend time making sure you have a really good alignment of that strain gauge uh, before we go ahead and test it. So the uh, strain that we'll kind of uh, call our strain compensated strain, it's really the strain we collected from the extensometer plus uh, the absolute value of this shift. So it's basically shifting it by that much over and that would give us the intercept to zero. So let's take a look at Excel and see how we could do that. So if you have to do the toe compensation, uh, where you should go is back to the raw data and it's kind of pain, but you're gonna have to go uh, visually down the strain. And what you see here is that we start to go negative right about cell or row eight. Uh, and those values are getting larger in the negative direction. So um, what we want to do is see when they kind of max out and then start to go back towards zero or the um, start to get an increasing amount of strain. So what you see here uh, is it went all the way up to 149 uh, and then it started to go, uh, now it's starting to get positive. So around cell 20, six and you know what since I want to be kind of away from that strain gauge uh, slip region I'm going to take a couple data points after that so let's go here in uh, row 29 and basically I'm highlighting it so I kind of knows this is where I'm going to set my initiation for the strain gauge slip part um, and what I would like to do here is uh, we need to back calculate the strain shift and then I'm going to correct it. So um, in order to do that, let's go ahead and calculate M. That's our intercept or sorry, our slope. Uh, and we can use equals and then slope. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do X values. So that's going to be our strain column. It's going to be Oh, sorry, it says known Y, so uh, our Y should be the force. Uh, and what, let's go ahead and take about two, three seconds worth of data. And it doesn't have to be exact here because we're going to not use this for our Young's modulus, but we're just going to use it to uh, compensate the data. So um, if I'm getting 10 uh, readings per second, let's go ahead and go from 39 or sorry, to, uh, C29 to C, let's say 59. Okay. And then our uh, known X's are going to be the strain values. Uh, and if you control shift, oh, not down, sorry. And I'm just going to go ahead and type it in. That's easier. So D29 through D59. It's going to go ahead and give me my slope. Uh, and then what I also need is the y-intercept. So that's going to be my b-value. And there's a formula for that. It's just intercept. So if you press tab, see how it's auto uh, filling this in? If you press tab, that'll let you just select uh, instead of having to type out intercept. So I'm actually going to type this in too because we should be using the same set of data. So it'll be D29 through D59. Oh, and sorry, our Y's, that always kind of can... Uh, and then the X's will be D29 through D59. Okay. And then we really need that strain uh, E strain shift. So the strain shift, uh, as we've already previously derived, is just equal to B, and it was negative B divided by M, but since I'm going to be adding it, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as, uh, you could do abs, but I don't have to, abs for the absolute value, but it's, so it's our uh, y-intercept divided by the slope. Okay, and that's going to give me how much I need to actually add to all the strain values. Uh, and so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is say that this is equal to, and this will be my shifted strain. So actually, let me write that right here. This is, um, or compensated strain. And I'm going to save this 
and actually right now, let's go ahead and save it uh, and save as uh, and wherever your folder is. But what you should make sure to do is if you save it, it's going to save it as a CSV and you'll lose all those formulas that you've just generated. So go ahead and save it as an Excel workbook. That way, if you want to come back in uh, and edit this, uh, and you should be saving these. And so our compensated strain is going to be equal to uh, the strain from our extensometer plus the strain from the strain shift. Now, one thing you have to be careful here is if I go ahead and drag this formula down, you see is uh, it's not working. And why? Because uh, I didn't put a dollar sign. Make sure you do put the dollar sign. So it's this value, um, but we're always going to add the same strain shift value. So it should be D29 plus H dollar sign. So hold on the row. And that's going to update all of my strain values. Okay, and before I paste this data in, what I want to do is go back to my sheet and let's go ahead and delete all of the data that we had previously pasted in. And the reason we're going to do that is we don't want to get confused when we paste back over it. So what I'm going to get this time is the elongation and force, but I'm not going to take any of the data prior to uh, what I've compensated. So get my elongation and force and paste those in. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, my compensated strain. So not pasting in the strain for my extensometer, but the shifted values. So and it's going to tell you, if you control V, that there are circular references. Uh, and it's because it's referencing the sheet from uh, our raw data file. And so if we want to do, go ahead and click OK. We don't actually want to do that. Uh, so Control Z. Uh, and what I can do is click on cell 10, but right click. And you can just paste, instead of pasting all the formulas, you just paste the value. So that's with this numbers. So click uh, Paste Option and just the values, because we just need those values. Uh, and Let's go ahead and see here. So now I've actually got my toe compensated uh, stress strain and it's looking nice. It actually looks like it would intercept through the uh, origin of my plot.